Okay, we are at number two of the 20 plus sources of sizzling hot sellers. These are my top two favorite. I love me some for sale by owner. Oh my God, Cammie, you don't want me to call those people. They're so jaded. They're so mean. They won't hire a real estate agent. They've got a bad attitude. No, you've got the wrong perspective. And you are looking at them as them and us as us. And there's some distance between. And I'm here to share with you, they are just other human beings that are on this big blue spinning ball, just like us, doing the best that they can. So here's the thing about for sale by owners. In my experience, they fall into three different categories and you never know. It's kind of like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, but it's one of these four. And basically, here's what they look like. One kind of for sale by owner is simply an expired listing. Yeah, they tried it with an agent. They figured, shit, that was horrible. I can do better myself. So they're trying. They're trying on their own. In other words, they will hire a real estate agent. They just had a bad experience and that's okay because when we are professional and we know what we're doing and we bring that confidence to the table, we can talk to those people. Second kind of for sale by owner is someone who is an investor, buys and sells more properties than you and I ever will in our lifetime. I've got a friend like that. His name is Joe. This guy, I'm telling you, he knows the market better than any agent that I know in that town. When I call him or text him and say, hey, I know a property that's coming on the market, before I even finish my sentence, he says, yep, I know it's this property, I know how much they're asking for it, it sold three times in the last eight years, I mean, he knows everything. So, there are some for sale by owners that you'll get on the phone that frankly really don't have a lot of need for a real estate agent because they just know the business so well. But that's okay, because Joe, is a buyer. He's got cash in his pocket. He knows what he's doing. He makes money as a landlord. Therefore, this is exactly how I met him. As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, I'm making phone calls, right? I get Joe on the phone. He was actually having a really hard time with this one particular building. That's how I listed the property and that's how he and I ended up doing a lot of deals over the years was because we had a nice rapport and I proved to him that not all agents are created the same because I actually did what I said, said what I did, had some integrity and got the job done. So Joe was one of those investors who actually converted to a listing, but over the years there were plenty of properties that he actually sold on his own, but he had to buy them first. He had to buy them first. So when you run into a for sale by owner that is just so heavily into the market that they really don't even need an agent, and there are some, that's okay, build rapport. Find out what they're looking for. What are their criteria? So that you, when you find other properties, can partner them up. The third kind of for sale by owner is the guy that's just an ass. Okay? They're out there. Hey, listen. As human beings, don't we run into people that we like, people we don't like, people that are easy to get along with, people who aren't easy to get along with. That's called living. That's called playing the game. That's called good for you, because if you're not finding somebody like that on a regular basis, it means you're just not getting out of your comfort zone very often, and shame on you. So the guy that's not very friendly, he's arrogant, he knows what his property's worth, he sold property in California 28 years ago, or Arkansas in 1972, or his mother's a real estate agent, he knows exactly, well, whatever, like all those stories happen. There's a couple of things about this guy, number one, or gal, number one, if they are like that, you can actually shit can them because we are talking about making so many leads, so many contacts. We are prospecting so much and generating so much business that the beauty, the beauty, the blessing of prospecting and finding lots of clients is you can discern. You can pick and choose who you want to work with. And if somebody is going to suck the life force right out of your body, then you can cut them loose before you even start. The other thing about this guy is that if he is like that, it could be that he's like that because he's really, really motivated. And he is really ignorant, doesn't know what to do. And he's hiding it with his anger or his emotions. And all the other agents that cut him loose too soon, he could actually end up being a really great client of yours. The first kind of for sale by owner is the one that just doesn't have a clue what to do. They actually don't know a real estate agent. Imagine that. Most people know 18 of them. 
but there are people out there that just don't know a real estate agent. They've got property. They don't know what to do with it. They were left with their mom's property. And here they are. I'll give you an example. I'll give you a couple of examples. I call Beverly. Beverly is a for sale by owner. Beverly is an appraiser. Do you think, do you think Beverly knows any real estate agents? Only about a thousand of them. For whatever reason, Beverly had her house on the market for sale by owner. So we had a nice little conversation. We set up an appointment. I went over to meet with Beverly. Didn't even go in with the listing packet, but I do, as a professional agent, have a little file in my car. I always have one just in case, but I went in just to meet her. I was even thinking to myself, you know what, she's an appraiser, the property's vacant, she probably knows a lot of agents, whatever. I'll go over, I'll make uh, a nice relationship. Anywho, I get over to the house, she and I hit it off thick as thieves. I mean, from the minute we laid eyes on each other, it was instant rapport. We were girlfriends. We ended up sitting on the counter in the kitchen, vacant property. It's been empty for a year, getting dusty, right? It's kind of moldy smelling. And sitting up on the kitchen counter, just kind of swinging our legs back and forth. Beverly and I are just talking. She's telling me about her husband's got a brain tumor, and she's telling me about her daughter and just all that stuff. There comes a point in the conversation, and I said, Beverly, would you like me to take this property off your plate? And she looks at me and she says, would you do that for me? And I said, yeah. I said, I didn't bring a packet in, but I've got one in my car. Would you like me to go get it? We can just go ahead and take care of this. And she said, yeah, I'd really like that. So I listed Beverly's property. She was a for sale by owner. She knew a thousand real estate agents. She just didn't really know what to do in that situation. And I went over, I built some rapport, and I listed her property. I'll tell you about another for sale by owner. Making my phone calls, I get Peggy on the phone. Peggy and I meet at her four family. We go through the units, we, I meet the tenants, etc. The upstairs unit is vacant. We sit down, we flip over some paint cans because they're remodeling the upstairs. We flip over some paint cans. Peggy is a doctor. She does my Botox. She's, my, she's now my Botox doctor. I didn't know her then. But she's got on her nice suit. I've got on my nice suit because I'm meeting her for the first time. We flip over these paint cans and we sit down and I listed her property. Now, she is a doctor. She was married to a uh, engineer. They were married for 30 something years and they were going through one of the dirtiest, nastiest divorces you've ever seen in the history of divorces. And she was left to liquidate their three multifamilies. So we listed this property I ended up double ending that property. That was a nice $15,000 paycheck, double ending that property for Peggy. Then a few months later, I listed her second multifamily. And then a few months later, I listed her third multifamily. One phone call, double ended, another one in four deals, four transactions from one for sale by owner and made a good girlfriend and had my Botox doctor and we still stay in touch today and we are friends on Facebook. So the moral of the story, for sale by owner is just another human being. They are looking to sell properties. They are screaming to the world that they need to sell their property. Why aren't you listening? Why aren't two, one, two, one. Don't be so worried about what am I going to say? Cammy? what do I say when they ask me my commission? Cammy? what am I going to say when they say all oh, you realtors are the same and you're stupid and what are you going to do different? What do I say? What do I say? What do I say? Don't worry. I got a script for that. I have a script for that. But the words are not nearly as important as how we say them and who we're being. Because at the end of the day, you can read a script and get nowhere. You can internalize some words, speak from your heart, and get anywhere that you want to be. For sale by owner, number two of the 20 plus sources of yummy, sizzling, hot sellers that make you the rainmaker. Imagine, if you will, 10, 12, 15, 20 listings in your portfolio, so you go to the beach, you go spend time with your kids, you go take a vacation, you stay at home and do what you need to do. Let the buyer's agents go show your property. 
Don't waste time with open houses and uptime and driving around all over hell and creation with a buyer for six hours. If you've got six hours to drive a buyer around, how about spending six hours on the phone and door knocking and actually meeting people who own property, are motivated, want to sell, will list with you, because once you've listed it, you can go to the beach, and when the offers come in, you can wheel and deal from your cell phone, like I did, and actually enjoy your life. Hmm, imagine that. No, being a real estate agent does not mean working at night and on the weekend. And number one, which is coming up next, is one of the reasons why, after my first couple years in real estate, I never worked at night, I never worked in, on the weekends, I only worked with people that I liked, I was able to discern, pick and choose, and still stayed in the top 5% working 20 hours a week. Stay tuned.